before we get started in this tutorial, I'd like to give a massive thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. What's going on everyone? I know it's been a little while since I've made a video, but I'm back with another really good tutorial for you guys. And this week we're been covering beautiful destinations, um, frame blocking or frame masking. There's a whole bunch of different words um, for this type of transition, but they use it all the time. And I really like it because it uses elements within the frame to create the transition and that makes for a super seamless transition. So I'm just gonna play uh, about 20 seconds of the Let's Go Venice video um, and try and point out some of the uh, frame blocking transitions that are used. Okay, so that should be a good enough idea of um, what you can do with it. And you'll notice in that little 15 second segment, um, anytime the shot goes black, that's usually when there's a transition between one shot to the next. So for here, um, when the book is flipping, um, it goes down and then goes to a black screen. There's some more video, um, very dark video to sort of overlap that transition. And then it comes out um, here where the top of the frame is black of under the bridge and then pans down. So overall this technique is actually super simple and easy to do. Um, and this week we're going to be working in Premiere Pro. Um, I have the 2018 version um, but everything will be the same in 2017 as well. So I have two clips right here. Um, these are from Vancouver in Gastown. If you guys haven't been it has a really cool steam clock and everyone goes, takes pictures there. It's a huge Instagram spot, but it is pretty cool. Um, and these shots are from my summer 2017 video. So if you haven't seen that yet, make sure you go check it out. So I'm just gonna play the two raw clips here for you, just so you get an idea of what we're working with. So as you can tell, there's something that's gonna make this transition um, a lot more streamlined is that both these shots are moving in the same direction. And this is probably the most important thing for making a good frame blocking transition. So for this, um, the camera is moving right in both of these shots. So this one I'm sort of hovering around, go left and right, and then for the transition though, it will be moving right. And then as well in this clip here, we're gonna be moving right as well. So this is really gonna help us to make that smooth transition because the motion is gonna be carried out throughout. So it doesn't matter if it's going right, left, up, down, sort of 45 degrees at an angle, up or down. As long as the motion is roughly the same for both the clips, then it's really going to help this transition. So all we're going to need for this, we're going to need no plugins or anything, um, just normal Premiere Pro controls. So I'm going to drag this first clip um, because this is the clip that we want to be over top. And we're going to drag this above our second clip here. I'm just gonna drag that in just like so. So there's gonna be a little bit of overlap between them. And then all we have to do is add a mask to this top clip. So depending on the shot, so this one, if we hover forward to where we wanna make this transition, we'll notice that we get lots of straight lines. So it's gonna make it much easier for us to do the frame blocking transition off because we can use that straight line um, to create a seamless transition. If you had a more complex object, that you had to mask around, it would be a lot more difficult, but this is gonna make it super easy for us to do it. So now all we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our video effects here, over opacity, and then for this, I'm just gonna add a free draw Bezier mask. So, and what this is gonna allow is us to draw whatever mask we want um, in order to create this transition. So just to start, what I like to do is just do a whole bunch of points because um, this, especially if you have a more complicated object, really helps um, the more points you have, the more controls you have over the clip. But for this example, we're not actually going to need all of them. So we'll just start off just like that. Um, and then for this, we're just going to bring it off frame. Oh, we're actually working in the wrong clip here. So make sure you select the top clip, that is definitely an important step. So I'm gonna add in our draw tool here. We're just gonna do a straight line, 
and then a couple clips or a couple points just around. So as you can see, that took out the whole entire clip and that's not what we want. So if you go over under mask expansion, click the inverted checkpoint. So what's that, that, what that will do is that anything within this box will be masked out and everything outside of it will stay. So the next step is we're just gonna animate this mask. So go over to mask path. We're gonna toggle the animation here and then just gonna, so that's gonna be our first frame. And then I'm gonna skip to the next frame by clicking step forward frame. And we're just gonna start moving this along. And as you can see, that corner just sort of peeked out a little bit. And that is perfect. If you guys want, you can notice this is actually curving it. Um, so if you have something that is an object that is curved like that, um, you can either hold option um, or pull these sort of control points to get a straight line or to get a curved line. So that will be our first frame. And then I'm gonna skip forward once again to get to our next frame. Skip forward once again. We're just gonna repeat these steps to make our way through the clip until there's nothing left of our top clip here. What I'm trying to do is sort of go off, there's a little bit of a diagonal line. I'm just trying to go off there roughly. It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be for this transition. Especially because the object in our foreground is already blurry, it's not a definite hard line. So this makes it a lot easier. So as you can see, the steam clock underneath is starting to poke through. So this is just a super quick example of what you can do with this clip and with this transition. So if you had a more complicated object, it's definitely gonna require a little bit more finessing in order to get the shape exactly correct. And we're coming up to the end here. So as you can tell, it doesn't take long at all in order to get this transition. And then we are just gonna finish it off by dragging that over. So now the whole other clip, um, our second clip underneath has been revealed. So if we go back, we can sort of watch what exactly this is doing here. So that is the transition, but we're gonna do a couple more steps um, just to make this a lot more seamless. So number one, as you can tell, it looked a little bit choppy and that's because the straight line is very straight. Um, it's pretty much a definite cut. There's only about 10% feather. So if you go, or 10 pixels of feather. So if you go over to the left side and you drag up the feather, what that is gonna do is it's gonna feather this edge out to make this transition even more smooth. So I really like to do a lot of feather. Um, that's just a personal look that I like. Um, it's sort of like ghosts out, which I think looks really cool. So you can play around depending on your shot and depending on the object, you're really gonna have to adjust the feather accordingly. But as you can tell, what that will do, if I click out of the mask here, and look how much more smooth that looks. So that's really gonna help. And another thing you may wanna do is just play around with the bottom clip. Depending on um, where it is in the motion, you might have to slide this bottom clip, move it a little to the right, a little to the left, um, depending on the shot. So for this, I actually like it because if I go frame by frame through here, you'll notice that the motion is fairly consistent throughout. And so you might have to do a little bit of retiming as well with the speed in order to make sure that the clips sort of have a similar speed to it. So 
So maybe the second one is moving a little bit slower, um, but for the example, it does the job. So in this shot, I actually did another one after it to do the similar thing as Beautiful Destinations to really generate that speed and movement through the clips. Um, and you do consecutive frame blocking transitions in order to get that effect. But that is this week's transition tutorial, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys are Premiere Pro users, make sure you subscribe because I'm doing a whole bunch of Premiere Pro videos coming up. Thank you guys for all the support, as always, and I'll see you guys next time. Once again, I need to give a big thank you to Squarespace for supporting this week's video. If you guys are familiar with the products, um, they offer great um, website builders as well as domains or online store. I actually use one for my personal website. Uh, if you go to markwebstercreative.com, this is my online portfolio that I have for my design work as well as some of my video work as well. So this is a few of the projects that I have built in school. Um, I did some speakers and amplifier and a coat hanger. And Squarespace was perfect because I was able to create this whole website in pretty much a day and it's been really good. Um, so if you guys are interested in 10% off, go to squarespace.com. Then forward slash Mark Webster for 10% off your first order. So thank you guys as always. I'd really appreciate if you guys go um, if you are building a website, go through this link um, and make sure you get that 10% discount. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time.